This episode is brought to you by Starry. When you drink Starry Lemon Lime Soda, every sip is a win. Perfect for game time or any time. It's a crisp, refreshing lemon lime soda that's caffeine-free and bursting with flavor that makes you go, ah. Starry hits different. Find it in stores or online today. <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, 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 you, you complete me. Hello and welcome to Unequal Sequel. My name is Dave and I'm one of the two hosts of this mammoth podcast. And I'm Rich and I'm the other host of this mammoth podcast. Think of me as Thelma to Dave's Louise. He's a natural redhead and I'm quite likely to drive us both off a cliff. <laughs> That's very good and true, yeah. yeah. The premise of Unequal Sequel is very simple. We ask our guests for their best ever sequel, worst ever sequel and finally their dream sequel. And of course we quite often drift off and talk about other things, mostly movie related but sometimes just life in general. Do have to point out as well, we do love to drop big spoilers. Uh, so if you haven't seen one of the movies we discuss, please just turn us off. Go learn how to do some gliding. It's a lovely day for it, by the way. Uh, and then come back and play the rest of the episode. On today's episode, we are joined by Jamal Ford Robinson. Jamal is a professional rugby player. He plays a tight head or loose head prop for Gloucester Rugby. He's also played for England. As well as playing rugby, he's brilliant on TikTok. And you can follow him streaming games, games and stuff on Twitch as well. He's an all-round excellent bloke. We're very excited to sit down with Jamal and talk all things sequels with him. These are Jamal Ford Robinson's Unequal Sequels. Enjoy! Can you remember the first sequel you got excited about when you were younger? Oh, I, 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 um, probably it would have... Mm, would it have been a Disney mm, one? Is that what you're thinking? No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe it is probably like Matrix Two or something. Really? Wow. Wait, okay. how is that? Is that a rogue choice? I think You're like, how old am I? That's... Yeah, no, no, legit. Like, I'm trying to think. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think back of films that were back that time that yeah. I would have watched. I feel like it would have been that. I hopefully I'm old enough to have said the answer. That's really. Were you excited for the Matrix Two? Had you kind of seen the Matrix One by that point, or <sighs> my memory's fair. I feel like. I feel like I, I would have done. Like, if I'm old enough, I feel like I would have done. I feel like, like if you want to see Matrix answer. 2, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we could talk about that, because we could talk about what a massive disappointment that is as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But at that point in your age, did you think it was a good film? Yeah. Oh, the first one was amazing. What about the second one, when you first yeah. saw it? <laughs> yeah. it, just, it just went a bit... I don't know. I kind of liked what I liked about the Matrix was the kind of like the fighting. I was I always did Taekwondo as a kid, right? So mm. I um I, I enjoyed the fighting element of it. And then I need to try and separate two and three in my head, but they just kind of blur. They yeah, kind of they about do. Like they do. Robots and and I, I'm I'm all for a bit of world building and like getting to know the law, but like it just kind I just felt it kind of went away from what I really enjoyed about the first one, which was fighting and guns, right? Just fighting. That's what... I'm a very simple beast. Yeah, well, that's so what everyone wait. liked about it. Everyone loved bullet time, and then they went, oh, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Everyone liked it too much. <laughs> like, yeah. We're going to introduce you some psychological nonsense about, like, what the meaning of life. Like, yeah. Just want bullet time. Just bring that back. <laughs> yeah. Just give me slow mos <laughs> Yeah. Now, not crappy CGI, you know, fuck fest kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> were yeah, you, did you go to the, did you go to the cinema a lot when you were younger? Uh, no, not, not that I can remember. Uh, it's definitely become more of a thing in like the last, like my adulthood, right? Is where yeah. it's kind of like the, my love for films has come from. But yeah. I don't think it was really there when I was young. There's actually a film that I remembered. Uh, I had to Google it. Thank the Google, by the way, complete yeah. side note, but like you can type the smallest details that you remember from a film 
into Google <laughs> and it will produce the result. And it is the best thing. Because I remember there was this film, because again, like I said, I was like, I did Taekwondo as a kid. My mum taught Taekwondo. And so a lot of the films I watched growing up were kind of martial art based. Yeah. And there was this one film that all I could remember about it was that there was a kangaroo, a fighting kangaroo. And at some point, these kids fell into a well. Right. Was it really Kangaroo cool? Jack? I can't, I, I'm going to have to Google it again. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if it works. So when you were younger, were you watching like Kickboxer and stuff and Bloodsport? Yes. Like, Van exactly. Damme was like your, your hero. But he was the man. Ugh, he's still the man. Nice. Martial arts, kangaroo. <laughs> this is brilliant. Kids <laughs> fall into well. Warriors of virtue. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it either, but it sounds great. Fantasy film. I really want to watch it now. <laughs> there you go. So does the kangaroo talk, or is he just a side note in this? No, I think, I think, if I remember right, I need, I need to watch it again. Yeah. I Obviously. think the kangaroo served as like the Master Yoda type figure. This is mental. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you enjoyed fighting films, so you enjoyed a kangaroo master fighting film. Uh, the way I remember it is a kid fell into the well <laughs> and got taught to fight by a kangaroo. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm so up for this already. Lock it in. Like, <laughs> I'm watching this with my little boy. Like that's done. <laughs> it could be an adult film. Is it really violent or is it a kids film? I think it's, it's a kids film. Kids film. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Nowadays, that could have just been some guys been smoking too much or drinking too much one day, <laughs> and then they send that to Hollywood, and they're like, "By golly, we've done it again." <laughs> <laughs> that's a million pound idea. Love well, it. I don't know where Love to go it. from there. Um, fighting kangaroos. <laughs> yeah, how do you segue away from fighting kangaroos? Well, I thought it was Kangaroo Jack, but obviously... I, it's that's definitely not. not, no. Yeah. So do you still get excited about sequels? Uh, are, are they the things that bring you to the cinema now, or are you a bigger fan of, like, original content? So I kind of... So like everything in my life, it goes through... New, I go through different periods where I'm just, like, enthusiastic about one thing, then yeah. another thing. So at the moment, uh, I'm going down, like, a bit of a... Uh, older school kit i say old school but like films that i might not have seen because i was too young at the time right but what i do tend to enjoy is going on like i like weird films i like films here's the thing about me i like talking about stuff that no one else knows about because i get to sound really smart right (laughs) Uh, because they don't have an opinion on it because they've never so so i like to watch so i like you know like movie you know movie yeah yeah so I had to go on there and just find some like weird Scandinavian film that's got like 2000 reviews on IMDb and like, I'll watch that. And so I kind of like going down that, that, that hot, that rabbit hole. But then like, I still watch, you know, uh, anything that comes up in the blockbusters. Like, um, yeah. I've got me Cineworld world unlimited card. So I need to make good nice. use out of that. Yeah. Get me money's worth. The fourteen ninety nine or whatever it is a month. I pay up front. Oh. Just what well. is it? Two, 200 and something quid. Just, Get it gone, you know, and then it's gone, you know, you just live in a year. Just yeah, we have an un- un- Odeon and it doesn't seem that doesn't seem to be an option for us because I looked no, for it the other day. No, no, you have to just do a bit of time. Well, let's just hope that Cineworld doesn't actually like go bust, that they're like threatening at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's not looking good. It's not no, looking good. It's really so not. What, what films have been diving into recently? I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, so what have I done recently? So I did Memento the other day, which I definitely should have watched before. Uh, I'm on the hunt for Shawshank, but I'm I'm kind of reading I'm reading the book as well. Oh, okay, um, so I, I might hold off on that one. I watched. Um, what else? Have I, let me get. I mean, this is this is. I I've got my phone with me because <laughs> I, I do all my 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 ratings on IMDb, right? So it's oh, okay. I can just refer back to that. Uh, Whiplash, I did again for a second time. That oh, was really I love good. Whiplash. Five stars, five or oh, ten stars film. on. Uh, I gave it a nine. So. So I, I, to be fair, I haven't rated a film 10 so what what has to be a 10 for you to give it a 10 well is it like the, a unicorn it hasn't happened yet yeah a 10 for me has got to be i mean i i kind of very reluctant to give out a 10 but hence why i haven't given one out yeah mm. there's probably one uh, for me I, i'm i'm quite i like to think i'm quite objective when i'm watching films and that like even if it's not particularly my sort of film i can say okay i know i know that was a good film 
yeah. even if I didn't necessarily enjoy it. And I try and give it points accordingly. A 10 would be like, I know this is an amazing film and I enjoy it. Yeah, okay. And there's probably one or two that might fall into that category. Okay. So Cool. Yeah, I think um, we're, we're very much the opposite, aren't we, Dave? Is that we're trigger we do, happy. We do film reviews. It's just just basically what we think. <laughs> like, we're like, good. we know this isn't a good film, but we really enjoyed it. <laughs> like, <that's> like... <laughs> yeah, we, we rate films out of seven because it's unequal. Yeah, yeah. It's, and we'll, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really help when we try and rate things to be. <laughs> to be fair, I don't really like doing it on tens. I, I think like six. Does anyone do yeah. a six? No. I think most people are a five so. or a ten. Yeah, five we or thought ten. we were different with seven. We should yeah. do a six, Rich. We just wanted to mess up the old Rotten Tomatoes ratings, really, didn't we? Yeah. Because <laughs> like they do it. aggregate scores. We just want to yeah. mess with it. <laughs> no, I always feel like my idea would be six, because, you know, like, just if you don't feel anything for the film, that's just a three. Do you know what mm. I mean? And then if it's like, okay, that was cool. Four. That was, that was good. Five. And then, whoa. Six. Yeah, and then it's and then there's no, you know, because I feel like once you once you if you're on a ten point system, over five is is kind of hard to distinguish. I feel like seven, you just meet at seven, and it's like, mm. yeah, yeah, it's fine. We'll get into it, but do you think there's more bad sequels than good sequels? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to think that's yeah. fair. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I did it's... have to think, but I I I feel like, I, I mean, they always get a hard like rub a bit as well because of like there's always like a bit of nostalgia for the first one especially if there's been a bit of time between but yeah like it's very rare where you know the sequels of films live up to the og yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about ones that just keep on going are you with it like when they start passing like the fours and the fives i think uh, and the uh, and the yeah I, I, so i feel like, mission possibles i feel like once you've hit like as soon as you go over three like all power to you. Just keep going. Just yeah, keep yeah. churning. Them out. <laughs> if people are gonna if people are gonna come, just you know, like Fast and Furious has transitioned from, you know, like the first three. I was like, yeah, I like my cars. This is cool. Yeah. And then the last lot of just being like, oh, these are just like superhero movies. But I, I don't know which one. This is the one where it was like there was a, there was a bit of like fuckery going on with like the Rock chucking things around, and then. Like one of the end scenes is Ben Diesel. He like jumps like twenty feet in the air. There's like a superhero landing, and I was like, "I'm equally <laughs> out." But hey, if you want to go in that direction, cool. You, you, if people are paying, keep going. I mean, that could have been seven or eight. Yeah, or, it could be those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or nine. No, Rock's not in nine. <laughs> oh no, Rock's not in nine. No. Yeah. Yeah, they go mad from five onwards. It's just mental. Like. Yeah. <laughs> What is your best sequel ever then? If you think there's more bad ones than good ones, the the, the good ones must really stand yeah, out. Yeah, so my best sequel, I've gone for The Dark Knight. It's a good choice. It's a it's a popular choice. You're in a good club with The Dark Knight. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Because it is probably my favourite, probably second favourite film. What's the first, by out of interest? The first, I'd normally say, is Usual Suspects. Okay, that's that a is... 10, is it? spot on <laughs> he's, not, he's not even giving his favourite film a 10 <laughs> but I, I love that film yeah, yeah and then yeah Dark Knight is is definitely you know very just just behind and yeah it, it's it's a sequel that was actually much better than Batman Begins I think so yeah that's that's got to be my choice so why do you like it so much what made it stand out uh, okay the most generic answer ever but Heath Ledger as the yeah. Joker it's just the most like the amount, I, I just go on YouTube sometimes just just to look at random clips of it, and it's just every time it's just it, it's just amazing. It's just amazing, and it it's makes up so for like good, not being able to hear what Batman's saying ninety percent of the time. Yeah, Fine. you just <laughs> just watch his performance; it's so good. It's not really a Batman film, is it? Because he completely steals it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So There's good. so many like really like cool things that that come out of it, like like um. Apparently, like he his uh, Heath Ledger's makeup kept falling off, and that's why he licks his lips all the time to like try and stick his makeup back on. And yeah, then he I've thought, I've done it, that. done it so much, might as well make it into like a character trait. So that's yeah. why the Joker lips licks his lips all the time. And then like, there's a story of like um, 
Who's the guy that plays plays Harvey Dent? Aaron Eckhart. Is it yeah. Aaron Eckhart? Yeah. And it is. Um, he tells a story of like how before they're about to film a scene, like Heath's just walking up and down and muttering to himself, and, like going kind of a bit crazy. And so that when he comes really close to his face, Aaron Eckhart's like like this, puts his hands up like instinctively, and uh, and then afterwards Heath's like that's acting. <laughs> <laughs> It's, like, Very good. it's so good he's such a good performance so when did you first see it was this a cinema a trip uh, i actually don't know really yeah I, I i would guess it was a cinema trip mm. i've watched it a few times i guess the first time must have been at the cinema must have been yeah yeah i, I definitely remember i remember seeing dark Knight rises in the cinema so I'd, I'd guess that I'd seen the previous one. Well, well. Are, are you disappointed by that one? Because we'll, when we talk about Dark Knight, we can't not talk about the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, no, I I, I enjoyed it as well. Not as much as Dark Knight. But okay. I think I'm just a sucker for like the... Batman. The, 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 <laughs> Batman. But also just like the, the bad guys, like Bane. I thought mm. like Tom Hardy as Bane was so cool. I just love like the... Uh, I was going to say anti-hero, but like just the villains. Just the villains are just... You've got a good villain, it really... Yeah. I love yeah. that. Same yeah, the, here. It's all about the villains. The villains yeah. make or break a Batman film normally. And when you look like Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger as <laughs> as, as Mr. Freeze, just punning yeah. it up. <laughs> but then Jim Carrey in Batman Forever, he goes big and it's not a brilliant film, but I still think he's the best thing about it. He's he's a, Well, when I was young, I thought it was amazing. And I stand by there, still prefer to watch Batman Forever compared to the, the new Batman or... Or Batman, right? Dark Riders. Really? Yeah, we did not get along with the new Batman. Did you like the new Batman? I did. Again, th- this is where I was like, I get suckered into like thinking about cinema photography and yeah, yeah. what's the aesthetic they're trying to go for here. Because like, I I enjoyed. It was different. It was obviously very different to like ones you've seen before. Because it was it was a bit more like a. It was like an investigation murder mystery, like just dialed up a little bit. Yeah, um, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was a li- maybe a little bit too long, but I did enjoy it. It Definitely was massively too long. Too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could have done without the whole like you know flooding and all that kind of stuff. Could have, could have for me, could have skipped all the all four that endings. Bit, really. Yeah, I, I, just I just like say. just arrest him and then have the the prison scene bit and yeah, forget all the explosions and all that stuff. Yeah, would have been fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's your, what's your best scene in uh, the Dark Knight? What really uh, bit stands out? If just someone says, "What's your favorite bit?" Like I just did, stupidly, what would you say? Yeah. Oh, I, there's a few. I think that that opening sequence is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, the way you've got, you know, when you watch it back and you can see, oh, look, look at those like, like mannerisms. That's clearly him. But like when you're watching it for the first time, and you're just seeing mm. this group of masked guys, and it's like, and then it reveals him. I think that's awesome. For the music. And then, outside of that. It's probably that one, you know, when he, he's, uh, I don't want to get them mixed up. I need to watch it again. But I think there's two different occasions where he talks about the story of how he got the scars. I think it's maybe yeah. three. Yeah, yeah. Is it three? Changing, yeah. There's sort of two and a half, isn't there? He tells two and then the third one he doesn't get There's definitely get to father tell it. and there's definitely the, the girlfriend one or the wife. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't get to tell his third one. He tries to tell Batman his third one and Batman just beats him up, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So it'd be one of those. There's also that scene with like you know when he uh, when he when they take the the pool cue and makes the two guys oh. fight to like that that whole bit. Uh, it's just uh, it's just all it's all good. Isn't it? It's all good. <laughs> it's all brilliant. You're right. It is all good. Yeah. Like that. You, that yeah. I I'd struggle to pick a favorite scene from that because it's yeah. all it's all it's, just it's, brilliant. It's, it's, it's pretty much near perfect i can see why you're like hesitant to give it your magical 10 but it's, it's pretty much yeah. up there because you like you say the cinematography is brilliant in it the music's good because like every time that the joker's on you've got like the jaws music it's warning you that he's coming um yeah. and in all of this brilliantness you suddenly realize that it is meant to be a batman film and everything's <laughs> you're like oh yeah batman's in this batman's film he's... Be in this. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got christian bale being uh being bruce wayne how what, what do you think he's like in this role do you prefer his bruce wayne to batman or um you're happy with both i'm happy with both i'm happy with both. I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not <laughs> Listen, who am this, i to this, say this, christian bale's this, a bad actor 
this film holds is very is very high in my yeah. in my in my mind. I can't I can't say a bad word. Have you tried to make someone who hasn't watched it watch it? No, because everyone I know has watched it. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, like who's not watched it, Dave? <laughs> well, I, I, I did. Yeah. I had to make my wife watch it. And this has I had to make her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was like, can we watch The Dark Knight? She's like, oh, it's a superhero Batman-y film. I was like, well, first of all, it's barely a Batman film. Um, and then you tell them it's Heath Ledger's in it, and they think, ten things I hate about you, and then you've got them <laughs> on the line. <laughs> and then you get in the film, and he's really good. But it's one of those films that I had to convince my wife to watch, and then she was like, oh, she was, that was really good. Yeah, not a good I've impression of that one like that. Why has your wife got a deeper voice than you, Dave? <laughs> she's lovely. She's Canadian. <laughs> she's not going to like you saying, like, making her voice like that. She won't listen. <laughs> she won't listen to this. Our wives hear enough of us. They don't listen to this. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> How many times have you watched it, do you reckon? Is it is it your go-to film if you need cheering up or something to watch? Because it's quite a long film. Here's another thing. I don't watch... Uh, it's very rare that I watch films more than once. Same. I feel like you've got a rule book that I need to read. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll have to write it down. Uh, there is there is a, a list of rules in my head. Okay. And, and yeah, watching a film more than once is, is up there. That film I've watched maybe five times, which doesn't sound like a lot. But it is. It's my favourite. But for me, to even go back to it after the first time is big. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't like watching films over and over again. I'm not that kind of not that kind of person. Nah. <laughs> just me, who's the loser then? Just you, Dave. Yeah, just you, <laughs> yeah. mate. <laughs> I just find that, like the, I, I don't know. I just, I just find it hard to watch when you know the majority of what's coming up. Unless, unless you're watching a film where you know there's like a big twist at the end, and it drops all these hints that you know you should have picked up on previously, or you can mm. look at them a different way. Yeah, that's the only that's the only time where I'd be like, oh yeah, we should probably watch that one again. What other what other rules do you have? Is it like <laughs> only comedies in the daytime, horrors at night, <laughs> only Christmas films at Christmas? Horrors during the day. I'll, 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 I'll watch a horror for a, film. such a big man. You won't watch horror at night. Absolutely <laughs> not. Not a, let me. I watch. I watch. What have I watched? I watched two two horror films in the cinema and one. I watched at night. The other one I watched in a day. But both, to be fair, both bad choices because cinema is quite a dark environment. If I'm going to watch a, a horror film, I want it living room, uh, curtains open. Yeah, the, the, uh, maybe even leave the front door so the neighbour might like distract me, <laughs> so I don't have to be so engaged in it. And then I will, and then I will get through. Um, the last one I watched was—is uh, it the boy? Have you seen that? The boy. The doll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dolls are freaky. Clowns yeah. and dolls are not the go-to. Like, <laughs> it the clown. Not for you. Well, I, I wouldn't have saw them, because I'm an idiot. And now... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, the, but Rich here, who's also a very large man, he doesn't like horror films nah, either. Nah, nah. Nah, nah it's just not for me. Just like you, I'm just, just, not my, just not my thing. Like, no, It's more like the body horror stuff that I don't like. It's all the gruesome, like, like hostel See, and stuff that. like that. I'm like, oh, like, like sores and sores. <laughs> Saw two. He said, what? I Saw's like not too that bad. Part. Oh right, okay. Yeah, I, I like that. I've watched all the Saw films in one day before. Wow, I'm very proud of that achievement. That's impressive. There's a new one coming. <laughs> I hope it's good because that that spin-off spiral was tragic. It was okay. so bad. Oh, I've not seen it yet. I watched it. Was it Chris, is it Chris Rock in it? The main yeah, guy? it's so bad. But yeah, but like, okay. So what I said about like going back and watching film Saw, obviously because you have like jigsaw and then other people take on the role and yeah and so watching those back to back was like oh shit like oh that that oh and then you start you know piecing together dots that were hinted at before uh so that's yeah that's one my one occasion where i've probably sat and watched a lot of films but yeah they were all probably done during the day with the lights at full blast (laughs) <laughs> did you not think of have you done that with like the batman films or like say you've seen dark knight in the cinema and then you're like oh, i'll come back and i'll watch the first one when i get home kind of thing or when the last one came out on blu-ray or wherever it was you thought oh i'll watch them all in one day that's a long no, day actually. not 
Uh, I, I have done it. What have I done it with recently? It might have been the Hobbits when they when they came out. That's a long The Lord day. of the Rings one. That's a long day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when like the new uh, new Star Wars came out, I think I would have watched the one before. Yeah. Did you watch Batman Begins before you went and saw Dark Knight? You... I actually didn't, no. Really? No, I, I watched Batman Begins after Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. Yeah. Let's stay into that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know how. I yeah. Don't know how. <laughs> Were you disappointed to back then again, or did you think that's a really good opener? I can see how we got to point B. The problem was because I've watched Dark Knight, is I've already reached peak Batman. Yeah, so it was like, yeah. I was just, I kind of just took it for what it was. It's like a, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna fill in a, a bit of information, but yeah. it's no more than that to me. It's only downhill from Dark Knight, right? It's no like, there's yeah. no upwards from there. Dark Knight, I would say Dark Knight and Terminator Two are our most picked, and Wrath of Khan yeah. are our most picked. Okay. Best. So I actually asked um, a few of the lads at the club because I was I was interested to see what they said. And so Terminator Two came up. Yeah. Mm. Um, Godfather Two came up. It's yeah. hard work, but it's a great film. Mm. <laughs> but but why do you renowned as like the best sequel ever? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was one other that came up a couple of times. But... Aliens, maybe we've had Aliens come up quite a lot. No, that's a good one. What was it? <laughs> Trek Two. Shrek two, Shrek two is a great yeah. shout. Yeah, yeah, that's a good shout. That was, in there. That was I'm, a good I'm shout. All, I'm, I'm there for Shrek two. What has been your most disappointing sequel? So you went in really, really hyped, and you've come out. So it wasn't bad, but you've just been like let down. It's like your parents saying, "I'm not angry at you. I'm just disappointed." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is so much worse, to be honest. Ooh. Let me refer to IMDb. There was one. There was one that I can't remember. I actually can't remember seeing it. But I remember really enjoying the first Triple X film. Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave hates Triple X films. That's why he's put his face in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> why did you like the first I'm with you. X? I think the first one's all right. I think the Vin first Diesel right. is not a, a freeboarding <laughs> bicycle maniac. <laughs> He can barely walk. Yeah, this is true. This is it, true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I liked it. It was probably just. It was just simple. I, was probably, I don't know what how old I was at the time, but it's just. It's just a simple. It's just guns and you know, it's like it's like James Bond, but for teenagers. You know, like I think you just... must have been absolutely the right age for this when it. Came yeah. Out. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then obviously everything after that. I mean, you would never like Triple H, but. After that, it was it dropped off a cliff. Ice Cube um, was in the second. State of the yeah. Union, it was called. Samuel Jackson yeah. still came back for it. Who was the bad? William Defoe, I think, was the bad guy. Oh, really? See, this is why we've got Dave because he's like the he's the encyclopedia. Because I, I think Triple yeah. X Two is better than Triple X One or Three, <laughs> mainly because it doesn't have Vin Diesel in it. And I don't got anything against Vin Diesel. It's just I don't think he should be like this Triple X sports star. I don't believe yeah. it. Um, <laughs> first one, I used to work in a bowling alley, and they let they gave were giving out free tickets to Triple X to whoever can get three strikes in a row, like a turkey it was called. And it took me ages to do that <laughs> to get free tickets because I wasn't paying for it, so I didn't pay for Triple X. <laughs> Fuck you, Vin Diesel. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't even worth it then. I just remember coming out going, "That was just a puddle of shit." Oh, <laughs> Dave, we're not getting Vin Diesel on the podcast now, are we, mate? No, but I like I think <laughs> Fast and Furious, great. Pitch Black, that's a good film. Uh, the Knock Around Guys, you know, that's a good Vin Diesel film. I Am Group, he's brilliant at that. Uh, <laughs> you nailed that line. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this it, it took me years to watch the second one, and I think when we were in the, the lockdown, me and the wife just watched loads of, like, franchises. We were just... Day after day of watching loads of films, we're like, okay, we did the Twilights and that was bad. Uh, and then we went to the, uh, yeah, the Triple X's, and I was like, oh, this is not good because she, she likes Vin Diesel. Probably why I hate him so much. <laughs> not hate him, his films. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Personal vendetta against Vin and Diesel. The third one with <laughs> Neymar's in it, and they they trying to make it all like, Oh, it's just anyway. Why do you think it's disappointing, isn't it? That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. I like how you you got the. It's just what you say about the encyclopedic knowledge. It's like mine coming on here. I, I listened to a few previous 
episode. Thank you. And maybe it was just the snippets that I listened to, but like people are really clued up on like everything about every film. Yeah. And I'm not. You don't have to be. That's not what we're about. We like we like no. we like to get lots of different people on. Like, but I am right? quite jealous of it. I'd like to be able to do that. I'd like like when I talk to people, like, oh, I really like this film, and he's like, oh yeah, well, that, the director of that was also the writer of this one. You should watch that. And like, how do you know this? Well, I, I would like to be good at rugby, but I'm terrible. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know I know what you mean. But a lot of those people are even more geekier than us. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Tons of people. Like, yeah. There's, 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 yeah. Loads of guys out there that just, yeah, exactly like you say. Like, oh yeah, have you tried this? Because this guy was influenced by this guy, and you're like, <laughs> no, like, no. But you're watching, you're watching movie <laughs> films, mate. Have you? That's. I don't even go there. I do, I do like a movie film. Have you watched? I was thinking about it. Have you watched a film called Border? I haven't. A Swedish film it's got a a right turn in it you'll never see and I, it, it must be on movie or something okay i watched it at the yeah. london film festival a few years ago and this is staying in for the listeners it's an absolute batshit crazy turn of events <laughs> i i will I've, if I've you like weird if you like weird films i tell you what's really good if we're going to go down the movie route have you seen one the hunt the uh with, the mads uh, pickerson film yeah. yeah i've 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 heard of it I haven't seen it, um, so but I've good. heard of it. Like, really good. And it's on Prime at the moment. Oh, is it? Okay. And then, so I'll tell you, so this, I don't know how you say his name, this director. Uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I'm going to go, go for it. He's Greek. Uh, Yorgos Lanthimos. <laughs> Sounds yeah. valid. Yeah. Sounds the guy who did the, is it the guy who did the lobster? <laughs> yes. And, and the, the, the sacred deer thing. Yeah. Yeah. But his, his other film, so Dog Two, which is on movie, is so good. Like, I just love that like, that kind of weird. I'm all about that. Okay, I'm all about that. Amazing. I'm trying to think of like really weird movies you might like. Like The Square. Have you seen The Square? Yes, I, I did. Yeah, yeah. That I, that that, may, uh, that does my head in a bit with The Square because there's no rhyme or reason or really a storyline. You know, kind of thing. There's, oh no, it's just a weird thing after weird thing. It's the same thing about like. <laughs> yeah. The Great Beauty. Have you seen that? I haven't. Well. I love that. Or, you know, another quite one a little bit weird is, have you seen Youth with Michael Caine? It's, no. it's, it's the same director as does The Great Beauty. It's 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 it's, it's got Paul Dano like... in it. It's got Harvey Cattell. Rachel Weisz is in it, I think. Oh, it's yeah. an actual movie then. Yeah. Is, is, is it like Kowani Squatsy? Like that Russian thing that's just like crazy images to music. Like that is like that's non, definitely non something linear narrative stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Stuff you sit in a in a film studies lecture and go, What the fuck am I doing in my life? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What about like um like Tusk? Like that because that messed your melon, didn't it, Dave? Yes. <laughs> I've heard of Tusk. The Kevin Smith film when Yeah, it's Kevin Smith and and yeah, I won't ruin it for you if you haven't seen it, but it's It's on weird. my watch list. It's very weird. I really like it, but Dave hates it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some other films with because I've, I went to London Film Festival for a few years. I did a bit of press on it, and I'm trying to think what the other weird things I've saw, but I can't think of any. All I can think is arty tarty ones like Roma on Netflix and stuff like that. That's a good watch. Should we move on to your worst ever sequel? Because then they're always fun. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one because I think I saw on Instagram your reaction when you went, when you went to see this. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing to, to hearing what you got to say about this one. Yeah, <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder. It is yeah. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you said about what what like disappointed, yeah, that's up there. And I'm not like, I'm not the biggest Marvel guy anyway. Like I watch the films, but I'm not like I need to watch everything in the universe and understand the links. I'm not that caught up on it, right? But I can appreciate. You know the films for what they are, but that was just. I love people that never... can't find the words. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was honestly like, not even halfway through, and I was, I would never leave the cinema, mm. but I was like, I probably could just sit on my phone here. This is about yeah. it. It was. I just don't like it. Just it just took what was 
kind of cool about the Thor films and like Marvel films in general of like being somewhat serious but having jokes and all that. And then it was just like, oh, we're just going to make a joke every single line and we're going to put in screaming goats from YouTube and it was just oh, like the goats. I like the like, goats. I hate the goats. The goats were funny the first time. And then yeah. it was just like, oh, oh they're, they're, yeah, they're still here. That's yeah, that's still a thing. That whole scene with um, uh, who 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 was the god, the the main god, Zeus, and, uh, Zeus, Russell Crowe, yeah, Crow yeah. Russell Crowe. It's just like, what's going on yeah. here? I don't even know what accent that's meant to be. <laughs> I just don't understand like what they were thinking with that film. What was the whole point of that bit? Like that whole point of the, the whole point of that like Russell Crowe bit was only to introduce something for the next movie, really. No, like, it was, it there was, was the no lightning point bolt in that well. movie. Uh, well, yeah, to get yeah. the lightning did bolt. use the shitty lightning bolt. But you could have, there could have been another MacGuffin. They could have got into the lightning Easily. bolt in there, really. <sighs> like, yeah. yeah, it was. I listened back to our episode when we reviewed it after we'd watched it. Well, we, and, I think uh, I think we're kind now after watching <laughs> yeah. it again. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was like, we were not hard enough on that movie because because yeah. I think I had my Marvel good. goggles on the first view in. And then I watched it again because you suggested. And I was like, okay, it's, it's on Disney Plus now. I'll see what it's like. And, oh, it's just mm. tea. Like you said, the jokes just... Yeah. They might be f- funny the first time, but they just keep... They're not funny the first going. time. They're not. And, yeah. <laughs> Are you a fan of Thor Ragnarok, the previous film? Yes. I'm a fan. I'm pretty much a fan of most of the Marvel films released. Yeah. Even, like, Eternals and other things that have maybe got a bad rap, but yeah, just this one was just like, they're it was enough well to balanced, put me off completely. Yeah, they yeah. are. That, that's the thing that I've liked about them is that, that they are just, yeah, well-balanced, good films. You know, they're all like sevens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I can see what you mean. Yeah. I really like Ragnarok because it's different and, and Taika, I can't say his name. I'm going to get it wrong again. Like Taika Waititi. <laughs> Taika Waikiki, Waitiki? Waititi? Waititi? I don't know. Anyway, Taika, I think he does a really good job of Ragnarok. I think it's really fresh yeah. and, and different. And then this time around, it's just like... They let oh, too far no. into his sense of humour, I think, by this point. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't still got what the core, what core 4 is all about. Yeah. It's like, it's like they watched the, the reception for Ragnarok and was like, oh, people like this character. Let's just, yeah, let's do this all mm. the time. Yeah. All so. the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. So was this a cinema job, Ace? Like you said, you're in the cinema. Yeah, that was a cinema job. Not not like like I said, not like massively into Marvel. So it wasn't like day one. It wasn't full of excitement to watch it. But I was like, you know, I need to get me me two and a half films a month to to justify right. the pain. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's get yeah. this done. <laughs> um, and it was did you get by like, yourself? No, I went with who did I? I went with three people. There's three of us that went. I normally do do a solo trip, but there was three of us because it was a Thor film, and of course they they enjoyed it. Um, of course, idiots. So I had to obviously I had to correct them on the way home uh, that everything they thought was good about the movie was trash. But yeah, it was just not a good experience. No. Did you uh, wait for the end credit scene? Were no, you up out your See, seat. Th- yeah, this. Okay, if, I look, if, if you look. You have to stick around, right? That's just the mm. done thing. It's I was gone. done thing. I, was like, I can't be in it anymore. I'll get them on YouTube. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm with you. Was that in, yeah. just out of weird interest? Was that Cheltenham you went to watch it in at Cine World? No, Gloucester uh, Keys. Oh, Gloucester yeah. Keys. Okay, I was cause I was just thinking about the only film I've ever walked out of, and that was Cheltenham Cine World, uh, Spider Man Three, and it was so shit. And my my mate I went with went. There's all you can eat Chinese next door. So like, yeah, let's go. So like, yeah. like, didn't bother watching it, but like got halfway through, left. Big. That is I, wonder, I wonder what's worse, Spider Man three or four? Love and fun. I think Spider Man three, isn't it? <sighs> Not I obviously. Think, well, I don't know. I don't know. It depends pick. on your your opinion, doesn't it? But Spider Man three is pretty shit. You haven't returned <laughs> to it then. You haven't picked up Disney Plus no, and watched it again. Not, not even curiosity. No. Uh, I'm uh, rule rule number what what rule are we all rule number five. <laughs> uh, if it. if it's initially good, I'll, I'll you know that's uh, I might watch it. Yeah. Probably won't. If it, if my initial my initial thinking is bad, 
I will not be convinced otherwise. Okay. You've got to go with your gut, you know? Yeah, yeah. You've got to go with your gut. If you think it was bad to begin with, that's it. That's so fine. if you were doing a Marvel, you're like, I'm going to do a Marvel rewatch from the beginning, so I'm going to start Iron Man. Would you skip out the ones you don't like? I... I'm a completist. I could never do that. Even if I said I'm going to watch Triple X mm. 1 to 3, I'd have to watch Triple <laughs> yeah. X 1 to 3. I, okay, I feel I would have them on. I probably wouldn't watch them, but they would be on the screen so that I could say that I've done it. <laughs> I uh, hear it, kind of. Doing yeah. a puzzle. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have, they, 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 I think kind of like you, they'd have to, I'd have to include them. Mm. But just maybe I'll, you know, it's a good time to get some other things done whilst it's yeah, playing yeah. in the background. Absolutely. Cooking or something. Yeah. Going for a jog. Yeah. So is there everything in there that to you makes like a bad sequel? What is in there that makes you think things you don't like? Is it like characters go backwards, the MacGuffin's rubbish, the music's rubbish or the storyline? It... I mean, it varies from, from franchise to franchise, right? Yeah. I think for me, like you have to, be you have to continue the essence of the original, especially if it had like a good reception. You know? It's like, okay, a good understanding of what made that good. I feel I've lost that in this film, yeah. And then it's it's a hard one because I, I get I get that there's also a need to want to progress things mm. and and move things forward. You know, you, you you're not going to get away with just producing the same movie again, but they just missed the mark completely. I think they did try to get away with making the same movie again, though, didn't they? That was the yeah, problem. Yeah, they did. Is mm. that they they went, oh yeah, well this is what you like to write Ragnarok. Let's have more of that, but worse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> would you go watch another four film would you go back to that character or is it now like you waste me you no longer got my money marvel <laughs> no I, I i would in the hope that they rectify their issues what, what would different director yes mm. different director do you know I, I even went down the rabbit hole of like looking at uh youtube videos and it was like it was just what was it? It's like one of these cheesy YouTubers, like top ten reasons we should have known Thor was bad, and it's just like, <laughs> and it's just like clips of him in like interviews before the film's release, just like asking what the script was. He's like, oh, we haven't got a script, and yeah. just just things like that. I was like, yeah, I think that shows. Yeah. I think they relied way too much on ad lib. Mm. Yeah, everyone thought they were the funniest person in the room, and the writers just saying. Why do I even show up? It's like... That's the whole point, right? <laughs> yeah. Because th there's a lot of serious stuff in the film. You know, there's like... Oh, like... yeah, we haven't even talked about the bad guy. No, well, we talked about the bad guy, who's a, who, could, who could be an yeah. incredibly good bad guy. Really scary. And yeah. But also the fact that, that, that supposedly Thor's like love of his life is dying of cancer in front of his eyes. And <laughs> apparently that's funny. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Cancer's hilarious, guys. I don't know if you got it recently. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one of the first things I I said when because uh, there's, a, a, there's a, a friend of a friend who I know is like very big into Marvel, very big. And when I put that thing up on Instagram, they were the, the first ones in my DMs. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> why? Wh hold on. You, why do you like, not like this? And that that was the first thing I, I actually said. I was like. This whole film, this whole whatever Aaron, whatever it was, was just one big gag between everyone. It's just a joke. It's just oh, funny, 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 funny. And it's like, okay, now someone's dying of cancer and you want me to fill for this person. Mm. Like, no, you, you don't You don't get to mess with my emotions like that, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Either yeah. team me up to, to feel emotional about this person or don't have them die of cancer. But then, like, don't try and make jokes for the whole film and then expect me to suddenly switch gears and go, oh, look, Thor is, you know, he's just like one of us. But no, yeah. it doesn't work like that. I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. That's like, that, that's, that switch gear is rubbish. And they totally waste Christian Bale as well. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Like, what, what, I, like you said, we haven't even spoken about it, but like he is like, even his, his he is like that, that kind of like, had the potential to be that kind of anti-hero of like, mm. you know, he, he's got is he inherently he was evil? correct He's got right a purpose yeah, yeah that's the best thing a, a bad guy who's kind of right you know <laughs> that's that's the best bad guy <laughs> yeah you say like you, you, oh, i want to kill the gods they're all bad and they're you know they're 
you know, just let's just get rid of them all. Mm. And then you're supposed to like show this guy as the bad guy. But then like you look at that scene where all the gods have their meeting and they're talking about, oh, yeah, like Georgie. however many thousands died and blah, blah, blah. And like, oh, OK. So it's like, what? So we should be rooting for this bad guy now. Yeah. Because yeah. this is like, what are we doing here? Definitely. Absolutely. Like the best, the best, best bad guys are the bad guys with a cause, I think. And Christian Bale's like, it's gore, isn't it? I think it's called. Mm. Like, he yeah. has got a cause. Like, his daughter dies, like, the first scene of the movie. And if I have a rule, that's it. If a kid dies in the first scene of the movie, I don't want to watch this movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's got a cause, that guy. He's got something to fight for. And it, again, it's just all a bit flat, though, isn't it? Like, you know, he could be so sinister. He could be so dark. And actually, mm. it doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite come together. In the end, he's just a bit weak. Again, they, they Marvel make him like a, a good guy at the end. They don't yeah. go through about actually having a proper bad guy. Mm. Also, it had a big Loki hole in the middle of it. There was the, no one for him to have to bounce off of. It's just, it's bad. It's not a good it's Marvel not- film. <laughs> it's not. And I, I, I have Marvel go- goggles, especially the first time I watch one. I'm always like, that was yeah. amazing. Um, <laughs> and then I watch it back and I'm like, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes it's the other way around. But... Dave is very much the opposite to you. It's like he's really easily convinced to, to think differently about a movie. Like... Yeah. <laughs> if you have talked about a film I didn't agree with that you thought was bad, actually, Triple X, we. I still think it's bad. But I would end up agreeing this conversation going, yes, that was my favourite film previously, but now I hate it. <laughs> Is there a sequel that you enjoyed the sequel more than the previous one? So it doesn't have to be one, two. It can be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Horror franchises is quite good at this. You've watched all the saws. Do you think there's some in there some ones in there that are better than the previous ones? Um, I'd actually have to go to a franchise that you spoke about already, Fast and Furious. Yeah. yeah. Big fan of Tokyo Drift. We haven't had that one. Normally people say five, but you're going Tokyo Drift. Okay, I'm going Tokyo Drift. Um, nice. Just cars, and it? it's just cool. It's just cars. Yeah. And that was like, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that just because... Did you drift? Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, it's drifting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just, it just like, for me at that point, you know, with Fast and Furious, it was like, all you wanted to, was to see cool cars, bit of racing, you know, sprinkle a bit of story in there, but it's not really mm. important. Yeah. Uh, and so like Tokyo Drift was like, oh yeah, this is cool. And then, and then like that, you know, that, uh, that ludicrous actor pool music was just like, just very popular at the time because it just like fitted the, the scene so well. So yeah, so Tokyo Drift would be there. Brilliant. Sure. Did you like that it was away from the the Vin Diesel the Paul Walker storyline? Did you like that it was a a fresh story? Yeah, I just liked that it was. Well, Japan, I, and I like cool. those guys anyway. But yeah. it was just yeah, it's it's very simple. It was in <laughs> Japan, cool cars. You know, it's just fish out of water kind of story. Yeah, it didn't need to be you know related. It was it was fine. How did you feel about when they started to record on it back into the the franchise and like in, is it in seven? That it comes back into play. That Vin yeah, Diesel. Remember, they... Yeah, because they bring Han, they bring Han, Han dies back, in three, they, yeah. but then he comes back in five. Five. But then they kill him again in seven. But then and he's he back, back in, in nine. nine. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? I'm not even sure if I've watched the last two. <laughs> oh right, okay. You haven't missed anything. Yeah. So you wouldn't not you'd know if you'd if you'd watch nine because spoilers. Uh, they well, yeah, spoilers for you, mate. But they do take a car into space. They fire a car into space, essentially. Okay, I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> What's one with Jason Statham in? Seven. Yeah. Or there's Hobson Shaw, which is like the spin-off, which is the right. rock and Jason Statham. So I think I've watched Seven and Hobson Shaw, which is eight. Is that John Cena in eight? That, no, no that, that John is Cena's not. nine. That is um, the space one. Yeah, John Cena's nine. Um, and eight is... The um, submarine. Which one where they Theron. take? Um, it's when the rock. This might even be going back in. When the rock takes, you know, he goes like to all his like island the mates, and they all. Have... That that's Hobson Shaw. No. Okay. Is that Hobson? Yeah. Yeah. Is that's that when they Shaw? get Samoa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah, yeah. 
That's confusing. It's it is confusing. It is confusing. So many of them. <laughs> but at the end of Tokyo Drift, when Vin Diesel popped up in that yeah. little cameo, when he like Universal gave him the rights to whatever it pitch black or whatever it was he wanted, were you like whoa, losing your shit, <laughs> or you? No, it, yeah, that was it. Was cool. That was good because like because it was like a departure from the first two. It's like it's it's almost like a spin off, and then it was like oh oh, it's getting this tied in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was cool, man. See, Fast and Furious is like, like we were talking about earlier, where objectively, I know these aren't good movies, but I really mm. love them. I really do. Like, the yeah. first one's like Point Break, but Cars. And what's not to love? Like, honestly, like, and then they just get crazier and crazier from then. And I, with you, I actually really like Tokyo Drift. There's loads of people that hate mm. on Tokyo Drift, but I love it. It's not the worst it's great. one. great. No, no, two's the worst one. Too Fast, Too Furious is the worst one. How do you stretch. rate a Fast and Furious film on your uh, Richter scale kind of thing? Is, are they normally sixes and sevens? or? Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they'd start at like sixes. I think they start at sixes. Mm. I don't think they they ever get much higher Yeah, than that. Yeah. That's probably like terminal velocity for Fast and Furious films. That's fair. Because they're, yeah. they're not like, yeah, they're not good films, but they that they work. But they somehow survived. They're like the dinosaurs. <laughs> it's because they're yeah. fun. It's because they're fun. You don't always want to go to the movies and you know watch something really serious. And sometimes you just want to go and go. I fucking love that Jensen Interceptor. I want one of them. Mm. Like, you know, yeah. like you can do that. <laughs> but I think they've also done a very good job with like bringing in like already established stars to you know like bringing in Statham, seeing uh, the Rock. It's just like people will watch the film just because they're in it. Mm. And to see what they contribute to the, the the timeline. Yeah. So yeah, they've they've done a good job of keeping it fresh and and I I actually think although I'm not the biggest fan of it, I think the way that they have moved it from cars to realizing we're in a Marvel time and just becoming like superhero movies. Yeah, yeah, has actually yeah. worked out pretty well for them. Yeah, it has definitely. Um, even though I think I'm they've not, tapped like, into the that Mission Impossible with Flat going, okay, we've got to go bigger now and sillier. Uh, yeah. What can we do next? And I, honestly, I don't know where they're going to go with the next one. God knows where they're going to go with ten because they, they well, can't they're already in space. Like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Time travel uh, underwater. <laughs> We've done uh, a submarine already. Yeah, but they haven't really? gone underwater. Like I haven't true, seen a true. Bond, like car go mm. turn into a submarine yet. James Bond style. Yeah. A car chase underwater <laughs> <laughs> against it, fish so. people. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Driving a barracuda. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's where it's going to go. You know what? I'm here for it as well. I'm yeah, just... yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> what is your dream sequel then? Dream sequel. Now, uh, this one I went back and forth for, so I'm going to have to remember. What did I put? Let you put a rival, that. and thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, so so this one, this one was hard because... There's a, there's a few films that like I like, but I don't want to be sequeled. Like okay. they just just leave them alone. Which ones are they? Before we go into Arrival, what? Are they? Uh, let me check my let me check my list. <laughs> He's got it's a list. All, it's, <laughs> it's just you have, I have to refer back to the list. So like Usual Suspects, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say Joker, but that's already in the works. I'm a big fan of Joker. Okay. What's that? <laughs> What's that reaction? It's an okay film. Rich, it's, help. It's, it's not. It's not my favorite film. I'm not going to yeah, lie. It's, it's not. I think, really? it's, I think if you've watched Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, and then you watch Joker, you go, "Oh, that's where all that came from." It's a director <laughs> nicking better, better things from better films to make. Yeah. A point. Sorry, film. man. <laughs> I mean, he's great in it. Phoenix is amazing in it. Don't get me wrong. Amazing what a performance that is but a film as a whole i didn't love it i didn't hate it but it was uh how do you feel about the announcements of the sequel for it like there's yeah be a, 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 a musical. musical is it i've, I've yeah. not even i've not paid i don't pay attention to nudes oh let me inform uh, you okay. uh, lady gaga is harley quinn okay which i can see i can see yeah yeah but, yeah. yeah it's gonna be a musical apparently it's gonna be a, a musical a folly like a, a genuine a, musical Mm, apparently That's the so. rumor on the street. Like, are we getting like uh, a Star Is Born 
cross well, with... this is Todd Phillips so yes he's stealing from other films <laughs> Singing in the Rain yeah One Thread of the Cookie's Nest cross with Singing in the Rain Star is Born like there we go done yeah <laughs> Well, I think we've hurt him. It's not what I wanted, but it's, it's, it's... <laughs> I like the first one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch. Okay. Yeah. So, what was your your dream for Dream Se- a pick for Dream yeah. Sequel? Then? So I went Arrival. Brilliant! It's a brilliant film. I went Arrival because I just I fucking loved the first one. It's yeah. so like it because because you know the take on aliens has been done over and over again. Yeah. And I think there's still there's still I, I'm a, I'm here for alien films there, and there's still you know so much that can be done but like the way that that was done with like the communication and and what you know the, and and like the very human reaction of like well what are these doing here? let's just fucking blow them up let's just get get rid of them <laughs> and it's like no no, yeah. no no maybe they're actually here for something good and you know the kind of the fear of the unknown type. I just thought it was really cool and I'd love to see just I, I, I was. It, like I said, with the other ones, is that it's a very good film in its own right, mm. and so it doesn't it doesn't need to be like part of this grand sequel. But for me personally, I would just like to just I'd like to see what else they can do with that concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's I, I yeah really enjoyed it. For me, it's just frighteningly grounded. It's like the film I watched recently. I think that would probably how the human race would react. It was yeah. the most realistic film about. Aliens invaded. I'm not sure it'd be the Americans who'd be the sensible ones in China trying to blow it up, though. Like, I think it'd probably <laughs> the other way around. It's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what? The way it looks and the people act, and mm. you know, the Chinese have got the Russians on the side. Of course they have. Um, <laughs> but I hopefully there's an Amy Adams character at the at the, at the helm of it, keeping calm, who actually knows her shit. Um, yeah. And Forrest Whitaker's in charge, kind of thing. I think. That'd be amazing. Yeah, what a film. Yeah, uh, I only watched it incredible. once and then watched it again today. And the music and the atmosphere it creates and the... Oh, man, it's it's just good, isn't it? That, yeah. He's a good director, old Denis Villeneuve. Oh, he's... Yeah, he's one of them. So this is one, one of the things, going down rabbit holes, you know, when you're like, mm, like oh, right, he's, a, he's a good director. What else has he done? So I went on to watch, you know, quite a lot of his stuff because he did Incendies, right? Uh, mm. Enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else has he got on it? Sicario, Prisoners. Yeah, Sicario, Prisoners. Yeah. Prisoners is good. Prisoners is very good. Yeah. Um, uh, June, obviously. Blade Runner 2049. Oh, yeah. you love that, don't you, Dave? He's Blade good. Runner. I think it's perfection. He's very good at world building. But also he's really good at, like like you said, about kind of taking a taking a movie where we've seen all the tropes of this of, of the alien genre before and this mm. does have some of those tropes in it but it's just done in a such a different way that it feels yeah. fresh i mean it's basically close encounters isn't it like yeah you know, that's pretty much what it is but it feels so fresh and different not many like, people have seen it either no it's only like not like non-film people yeah uh, and yet it's such a big film i thought but I thought Should people be would be queuing up for it. Bigger than it is, definitely. It made a, it made like profit, which is a good thing. So there is. So that's mm. the first thing when you're looking for a sequel. Did it make the the production company money? Yes, it did. So they'd be like, okay, we can look at this. So would you, yeah. if you were looking at a sequel, would you bring those characters back, or would you tell another story in that world using those aliens and the the hectopods? That's a good question. Because mm. I, I really like that cast, but do you, do you know what would be interesting to see is is whether there were something going on somewhere else in the world at, at the same time. Oh, so you mean like another pod, like yeah. maybe from the Chinese angle? Yeah. Ah, oh, I like this. Yes. Mm. That would be interesting to see. Because there's those bits like there's there's a they get a message from the from a Russian someone in the Russian camp, don't they? He's trying to talk to them, and then you hear them like gunfire in the background and stuff. Yeah, It'd be kind of cool to see that from the other angle, wouldn't it? Because imagine that, this, like, that, like that. you know, so they so when they leave, imagine if that the the, the build up to them leaving was like there was obviously that that trigger that we've seen in the film, but then you know, like you said, something went on in Russia that happened at exactly the same time, coincided mm. or China or, or wherever. It'd be just interesting how it was dealt with in 
other or even if you did like I don't know, do you do prequels? Can you can you Yeah, yeah, do a prequel. What's your stance yeah. on prequels? We're planning spin offs. But like <laughs> where like maybe this has happened in a civilization that has since lost all record of it, you know, and so oh, you yeah, kind of yeah. You know, like Prey, how they did Prey recently with uh, Predator. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just like a completely, like way far back that there's no even record of it. But I don't know. Yeah. I just, that, that, I like, I like that, that world. It's good. Lot. It's cool. I thought you were going to say like, because they say in 3,000 years, we, we're giving you this gift and in 3,000 years we need your help. And I thought you were like, 3,000 years later, what, what, do they, what do they need our help with? What can yeah. we do? <laughs> yeah. You don't find out, do you? No, no, you don't. No. I think that ending so clever. Until that point, I was getting a bit confused because I, I was believing that it, it's very well edited that the daughter had died pre prior. Yeah, that's good. I think you're supposed to, Dave. Yeah. yeah. And then the there's point. a line at the beginning oh. when she says she doesn't like beginnings or endings. And once mm. you watch the film, you're like, oh, that's why, because it's not really a beginning or ending. It's all... Mm. Uh, cut into face and there's other points in the film when they kind of give away the ending apparently like bits are said but yeah didn't see it coming um did you when you first was this a cinema job no, that would have been a cinema job mm. solo trip i feel like this is a solo trip to the cinema this one that, yeah yeah because uh, again like i said like, if you're not a film person yeah it's not didn't really seem like it was high on the list of things to go watch you know yeah try and explain yeah. that to someone yeah, we're gonna go see yeah. this alien film. It's not what well, you think. There's no gun. Well, also, when I was explaining it to when 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 I was at the club, explain this, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I think my dream mom would be Arrival." And obviously, the first was like, no, "Never seen it." And then well, I'm trying to explain it. Yeah, it's just like this actually doesn't it doesn't explain well. No, <laughs> like, it doesn't. Alien does it? pods. <laughs> you don't want to give away the ending. Up into them, they're like basically communicating in hieroglyphics on a screen. It's like, uh, they're like yeah, jellyfish, selling handy this. jellyfish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a really good yeah. film, aren't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And by understanding their language, you can time travel somehow. Like, you know, like... <laughs> you don't see an alien for thirty-five minutes, really. You just hear sounds. It's got Jeremy Renner in it. <laughs> this is a. This is one of the films. That Amy Adams has been famously nominated for an Oscar. A billion times and never won and this was actually one she didn't even get nominated for as an at like the oscar she got it's nominated nice. baftas and everything else yeah but she is incredibly good in this film Very like good. so is rena really yeah he is yeah i think we talk quite often about how he's got a uh, people talk down nearly on him for some reason because of his weird singing and his the way he acts <laughs> but as a as a acting i think everyone's good i think it's, it's... you know i just um i was uh, sorry just segue from the yeah. uh my my uh second choice mm. oh yeah i was gonna ask you about this because you said you'd gone back and forth in a couple yeah but it was actually another alien based film okay should we try and guess yeah go is it okay well i think it's gonna be quite... when i say alien based that might have given it away mm. i'm trying to think like quite arty like high class i don't I'm think it's gonna like be like interstellar or something it's not really it's not really alienated though interstellar is it so mm. I'm that kind Can of. Can you call this RT? Yeah, I mean it is different. It's but it's different. But people have heard of it. Go on then. I can't. Can't even. District Nine. Oh, oh yeah. No, it, it's built for a yeah, sequel. Yeah. Apparently, Definitely. they keep promising it's going to happen. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. had it. We've talked about it a, a few times. That film is amazing. So good. But and and I did. I will admit one of my rules about not going back on films. Yeah. I. When I originally watched this, I thought it was terrible. Okay. Really? Yeah, because I think I was just young and didn't get it. Mm. Just didn't get like, probably went in expecting, you know, an a, an alien that shoot everything film, and got this weird kind of mockumentary South African weird <laughs> bloke just walking around the favela. It's like, <laughs> but I I watched it maybe maybe six months ago. Went back and watched it, mm. and it instantly. I, what, I gave it an eight, so which is good. Which is yeah, it's, it's that's high. high praise, man. Yeah, <laughs> they have announced. Well, the director says the script's coming along, but there's a point in the film where it says how long he's going to have to wait. Isn't it like seven years, eight years? And we're we're way we're past, past that. that. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, and I think with a film like that, you could still, because it had a lot, a lot to say about the world that was happening at that point. I think mm. it could definitely fill in now what was going on somewhere yeah. in the world. There's a lot more of that commentary to make. Yeah. There is. I, I think like the, it's interesting, like with both of those films, is that they both basically use like, aliens as a proxy for other more realistic stuff you know yeah yeah like the way that the 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 aliens are kind of just bunched up and told to live in amongst their own community in these you know run down places and then similarly with the you know fearing the unknown to you just want to blow it up it's, mm. i think that they're, they're they're good films even before you kind of start taking away the layers and realize what they're saying yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and that's the beauty of the beauty of cinema isn't it is that you can on the surface make a film that people watch and go i really enjoyed that and then if you dig a little bit deeper you can find you know you find they, a bit, they haven't a bit even realized they're watching like a political film yeah absolutely yeah. yeah you can you can explain to people afterwards like what this film's actually about and they're like yeah oh i didn't even you know i understand it now yeah district nine is <laughs> easier to try and explain to your friends to watch though than arrival yeah yeah that's true yeah yeah Yeah. but they are both really good choices do you have a kind of an idea for what you'd want from a district nine sequel district 10 district 10 (laughs) surely that's gonna be the name isn't it not really it's more just again just more of more of that please would you like him to be come human again yes okay yeah yeah it has a you know there has to be something of him because he, he's so good. Mm. So sad the end of that film when he's left there making that little paper aeroplane or what he was doing for his missus, the the flower. Yeah. Um, mm. And he looks at the camera and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> the alien's making me cry. <laughs> the prawn. The prawn. The prawn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do accents and Rich has banned me from doing accents. So. Yeah, they are really bad. <laughs> yeah. Those were Jamal Ford Robinson's Unequal Sequels. Dave, I love that man. Uh, he was in my list of top five guests to have on this show. And I'm so chuffed we got him on. Didn't disappoint, did he? Didn't disappoint. He's uh, his. I I don't think he's as confident with his, with his movies no, as he should be. Yeah, he's brilliant. And he watches a lot you know? of weird shit. He's more into like it's out there us. cinema yeah. than me and you are. He likes to watch proper movie, yeah, totally. style uh, weird stuff. So if anyone's got any yeah, like yeah. suggestions that you think Jamal will, would like. Send them our way, and we'll send them to him because yeah, we'll send them on. He's yeah, he's probably got a bit of time to watch movies at the moment because he's had a really oh. bad injury. Yeah, he's uh, he um, injured his shoulder playing for Gloucester the other day, and uh, after injuring his shoulder, got up and still made two tackles because he's a legend. And uh, unfortunately, he's he's kind of ripped the pectoral muscle off the bone, and he's going to be out for yeah, yeah, not good. He's going to be out for a while, three four months probably. So I imagine he's probably got some time to watch a lot of movies. And obviously we wish him well and hope he hope he feels better soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because we love recording that very much. I liked how, I think he just put us at ease straight away with his relaxed tone. Yeah, yeah, totally. In that interview. So we just matched him. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's, it's more sometimes our chats are like going to the pubs. And this one was more of like, hey, we're just going to sit down a coffee with kind of thing. And yeah. his picks were great. Never disappointed in any of them. Oh, uh, his picks are so good. Dark Knight, very popular choice for for best sequel. You know he's in a good he's in a good crowd there picking Dark well, Knight. Well, again, I picked a Dark Knight quote for the beginning, and then I found myself going down rabbit hole watching Dark Knight clips again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a good film. It's endlessly quotable. Yeah. Like Heath Ledger is just unbelievable in it. I know we keep saying it every time someone picks it, which seems to be once a season now. And that's fine with me. Yeah, absolutely. We can keep coming back to that easily because I can I can talk about it all the time. It's just so much to talk about. One thing I don't want to keep coming back to is Thor: Love and Thunder. No, that yeah. that like I said, Marvel Google's first time I watched it. Second time, it's not good. Nope, nope. It's my you know it it proves the rule. If a child dies in the first few scenes, it's going to be a crap movie. And it was. It is it, bad. It is and bad. I enjoy his reasoning i love his his list he made of things when he watches films and stuff so he's got like a list of seven things of do's and don'ts 
And yeah. he loves IMDb. He rates everything. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I totally agree with him on on Thor, Thor, Love and Love and Thunder, and it's such a disappointment. Yeah, it's worse out that trilogy as well. The fourth trilogy is easily. Is it a trilogy or is it four? Oh yeah, it's four you got, now. You got Thor, I you got about, Dark World, I forgot you got about Ragnarok. Dark World. I mean, Dark World's pretty yes, bad. Yes, I might say this is worse. I think it's probably worse too. You know, four. I think I agree I think with it you. It is. And a, a truly wonderful oh. choice of arrival for a dream sequel too. I love it when people pick like random <laughs> sequels. You wouldn't even think about a sequel too, and you're like, "This is a properly good film." Like Amy Adams yeah. is so good. Uh, Jeremy Renner. I've finally learned how to say his name. Is it Renner? Renner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because every episode he's popped up in the, since we've done 109 of these. I've been saying his name wrong. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I, I've I've told you a couple of times, but you just carry on. <laughs> So I, get, I gave up. <laughs> I can't say people's names. I like Rainer for him. No, no, it's Renner. Renner. Definitely Renner. Yeah. Uh, brilliant film. Denis Villeneuve. Yeah. Uh, Great director. I want to see the Russian sequel now. Yeah. What happened in the Russian base. I think that'd be the most interesting one. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. Yeah, I'm well up for that. Um, if... Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, if you're maybe if you're a Gloucester rugby fan and you're just tuning in because you know Jamal's awesome, then go back and listen. If you like what you've heard, we've got loads more episodes for you to go back and listen to. There's three more series where we interview equally brilliant guests. So go back, check those out. Hit the hit the subscribe button. Hit the automatic download button. We'll drop into your inbox every week. Most weeks, twice a week these days, um, and you'll get lots of different bits and bobs from us. Uh, you can also, if there's anything you disagreed with or agreed with, you can let us know on social media. So we are at Unequal Sequel on Instagram and Twitter. Or you can send us an email, unequalsequel at hotmail.com or pop along to our website, unequalsequel.com. Uh, yeah, and while you're there, if you fancy giving us a, a little like, uh, a little heart, a little five stars, or even writing us a review, that would be lovely. If you haven't got time for any of that, don't worry about it. Just just tell someone who likes movies to come and have a listen. You know, that'd be lovely. Cheers. Yeah, that's the people who seem to like our, our podcast, people who like movies. But we're dragging other people along. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> come along for the ride. Also listen to our now legendary extra episodes. Yes. Uh, legendary seems to be a strong word. I mean, legendary is a strong word. <laughs> I mean, variable in quality. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that... I think they're pretty good these days, Dave. <laughs> they're there every Friday if you need us. They are. I've got enough house to say, but thank you for listening, you guys. You know, you're all legends in my eyes. Um, Rich, you got anything else to say? No. I mean, just talking of extra episodes, go back and listen to our Halloween Kills episode, if you haven't already, released on Friday. I get very, very angry. Only listen to it if you've seen the film or don't care about spoilers. Only listen to it if you don't mind excessive amounts of swearing. And don't listen to it around children. Yeah, definitely don't listen to it around children. <laughs> or, you know, probably your nan. Yeah. Might be a fan of this Anyone one. But apart from that. Who may be offended by language. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun to record. So it is a yeso from me. Oh. Which is goodbye in Greek this time. Nice. And is a bye bye from him. Bye. Get out there. Go for a swim. I know I'm not going to, but you should. <laughs> bye. Do you like swimming? Uh, I'm terrible at swimming, mate. I'm absolutely terrible. I can swim. I'm just, you know, more sort of drowning with style. Um.